99% of developers don't get Docker. This big anthropomorphic whale carrying shipping containers on its back, often referred to as Moby Dock, has become the universal symbol for containers. Now friends, developers and engineers, let's talk about revolutions. No, not the political kind, but the technological earthquakes that reshape our entire industry practically overnight. In the world of software development, one such seismic event was undoubtedly the arrival of Docker. It wasn't just another tool. It was a tidal wave that fundamentally altered how we think about package and deploy software. Before Docker, the landscape was fragmented, often frustrating, plagued by the infamous it works on my machine syndrome, dependency conflicts, and the sheer inefficiency of heavyweight virtualization for simple application isolation. Then, in 2013, Docker didn't just knock on the door, it kicked it down. It achieved this by cleverly leveraging foundational Linux kernel features that had existed for years, namespaces for robust process isolation, ensuring applications run in their own isolated environments, seeing only their own processes and resources, and C groups or control groups for precise resource management, controlling CPU, memory, IO usage, and network bandwidth. These technologies were incredibly powerful but historically complex to handle directly. Docker's genius was providing an abstraction layer so elegant, so intuitive, that it rapidly became the lingua franca of containerization. Package your app into a container and run it anywhere. The brilliant simplicity of the Docker file, which allowed developers to declaratively define their application environments and dependencies in a human-readable script, was a cornerstone. Combined with the power of the Docker engine for building and running containers, the ease of the CLI, and the network effect of Docker Hub for sharing images, it was a perfect storm. Docker didn't just make containers easier, it democratized them. By packaging applications and their environments together, Docker ensured unprecedented portability and consistency across development, testing, and production environments. This, coupled with the inherent immutability of Docker images, once built, an image is a fixed snapshot that does not change, put immense power into the hands of individual developers. It became virtually synonymous with containers themselves, not just because it was first to market prominence, but because it defined the developer experience for an entire generation of cloud-native applications. It paved the way for microservices, truly immutable infrastructure, and the robust DevOps culture we strive for today. Docker allows the creation of lightweight, standalone, executable packages that contain everything needed to run an application, including the code, runtime, system tools, libraries, and configuration, all in a consistent, isolated manner. But remember, revolutions do not stand still. The challenges we face today aren't just about running containers anymore. They are about optimizing the entire software development lifecycle. How do we build faster? How do we ensure security isn't just an afterthought? How do we test complex distributed systems reliably? How do we maintain velocity without sacrificing quality? Docker recognized this shift and has been relentlessly evolving, expanding its focus from the core runtime to encompass the crucial surrounding developer workflows. We need to look beyond the basic commands and explore the sophisticated suite of tools Docker now offers, specifically designed to tackle these modern productivity bottlenecks and empower development teams. Because the friction is real, isn't it? Builds that seemingly defy Moore's law, getting slower as projects grow, forcing context switches while you wait for layers to download or code to compile inside opaque build processes. The ever-present problem of security vulnerabilities lurking in base images or transient dependencies discovered late in the cycle causing stressful remediation efforts or worse, making it into production. We need security integrated, not bolted on. The agonizing slow inner development loop tweaking code, then navigating the manual end step process of stopping, rebuilding, restarting, and context switching, bleeding minutes with every single iteration. In this case, flow state becomes impossible. And integration tests, the critical backstop for ensuring system cohesion, often remain a minefield of flaky setups, resource contention, reliance on unstable shared environments, or simply being skipped due to their complexity and runtime. If these pain points resonate deep in your developer's soul, then let's dissect how Docker's enhanced platform provides potent solutions. Our journey starts, as it often does, with Docker Desktop. More than just a local daemon manager, it's your integrated container development environment on Mac OS, Windows, or Linux. It normalizes the Docker experience across platforms, but its real power now lies in integrating advanced capabilities directly into your workflow. Docker Desktop has two key features. First, Docker Scout. In an era of constant CVE or common vulnerabilities and exposures disclosures, 
Reactive security scanning is insufficient. Scout represents a crucial shift-left paradigm embedding vulnerability analysis and supply chain intelligence directly into the development lifecycle. When you build an image or pull one, Scout interfaces with vulnerability databases like CVE lists, NVD, vendor advisories, etc., and uses sophisticated matching algorithms against the detected packages within your image layers. It analyzes package manager metadata like DPKHG, RPM, APK statuses, or language-specific manifests like packagelock.json or pom.xml. But Scout goes further than just listing CVEs. It provides contextualized risk assessment. It can correlate vulnerability data with package usage analysis, understanding if a vulnerable function is actually called by your application, helping prioritize fixes that mitigate actual exposure. It pinpoints the exact layer introducing the vulnerability, enabling targeted remediation. Often, it suggests specific actionable fixes, for example, upgrade libx to version y, consider using base image z. Scout can also help generate or ingest software bills of materials, or SBOMs, providing crucial transparency into your software dependencies. Integrating this level of analysis locally means identifying and mitigating risks in minutes, drastically reducing the cost and impact compared to discovering them hours or days later in CI or pre-production scans. Next, let's accelerate the inner loop with Docker Compose Watch. The traditional code followed by Docker Compose Down, Docker Compose Up, and then Test Cycle is a notorious productivity killer. Compose Watch automates this feedback loop with intelligence. By running Docker Compose Watch, you instruct Compose to monitor the file systems associated with your services, and it leverages efficient OS-level event mechanisms. When a change is detected within a configured path, and you can fine-tune inclusions or exclusions, perhaps ignoring .git or large node modules directories, watch triggers a defined action. For simple file changes mapped via volumes or bind mounts, like updating HTML, CSS, or configuration files, the sync action might intelligently copy only the changed files into the running container, often using efficient protocols, making the update near instantaneous. For changes requiring compilation or process restarts, like modifying Go, Java, Python, source code, the rebuild action can trigger specific build steps within the running container or restart the service process. The ultimate goal is to reflect your code changes in the running application within seconds, preserving your mental context and enabling rapid, iterative development and debugging. It transforms Compose from a static orchestrator into a dynamic development assistant. If you want to learn how to create your own Docker from scratch and pull an image from Docker Hub and execute commands in it, as well as learn about cgroups, kernel namespaces, the Docker registry API, and much more, check out the Build Your Own Docker course on CodeCrafters and receive a 40% off using the link in the description or the pinned comment. Now let's look at the bottleneck of build times. As applications scale, Docker files become complex, involving multiple stages, large dependencies, and computationally intensive steps. Local machines or standard CI runners often choke, leading to frustratingly long build times. Docker Build Cloud offers a powerful solution by decoupling the build execution from your local environment. Using Build Cloud involves configuring your Docker context to point to a remote builder fleet managed by Docker. When you invoke Docker Build, the build instructions and context are sent to this remote fleet which utilizes high CPU, high I.O. virtual machines optimized for build workloads. It leverages BuildKit's advanced features like parallel execution of independent build stages and optimized dependency resolution. The most significant advantage, however, is the multi-tiered distributed build cache. BuildCloud maintains a persistent, content-addressable storage cache shared across your team and CI-CD pipelines. Layers are identified by a cryptographic hash of their content and build instructions. If any build process, yours, a teammate's, a CI job has previously produced an identical layer, subsequent builds needing it can fetch it directly from the high-speed remote cache, bypassing redundant computation entirely. This goes far beyond local or even registry caching, dramatically increasing cache hit rates, especially in collaborative environments. It also excels at multi-platform builds, for example, building native ARM64 images from an x86 machine or vice versa, by providing native builders for different architectures within the fleet. The result is potentially order of magnitude reductions in build times. That up to 39x figure isn't hyperbole for certain workloads. You get faster CI feedback loops, consistent build environments, and less strain on local resources.
And finally, let's conquer integration testing with test containers. Writing reliable integration tests that involve external services like databases, queues, or APIs is historically challenging. Managing shared environments leads to flakiness, and scripting Docker commands manually is brittle. Test containers provides robust language-native libraries in Java, Go, .NET, Python, Node.js, Rust, etc. to manage the lifecycle of required service dependencies as code directly within your test suite. You programmatically declare the need for a container, for example, new PostgreSQL container, Postgres 15 Alpine. Test containers handles pulling the image, starting the container, and crucially, performing dynamic binding. It finds an available ephemeral port on your host machine, maps it to the container's exposed service port, and provides the runtime connection details, including the host, dynamic port, credentials, directly to your test code. This eliminates port conflicts and reliance on fixed configurations. Its powerful wait strategy mechanism ensures your tests only interact with a dependency once it's truly ready. For example, a health check endpoint to return a 200 OK, or a TCP port to accept connections. And this prevents race conditions common in naive test setups. The extensive library of pre-built modules encapsulates best practices for common services like Kafka, Redis, Elasticsearch, etc. Each test run gets clean, isolated instances, which ensures determinism. And behind the scenes, a component called Ryuk diligently performs garbage collection, ensuring all test spawn containers and networks are removed afterwards. For resource-intensive scenarios, Test Containers Cloud offers a managed backend, which offloads container execution while maintaining the same developer experience. So you can see the trajectory, right? Docker's evolution mirrors the growing complexity and demands of modern software development. It's transitioned from being the indispensable tool for container runtime to building an integrated platform focused on developer productivity across the entire lifecycle. If you learned something new today, consider subscribing to my channel and leaving a like on this video. And if you would like to support me further, I have left a Patreon link in the description. As always, thank you very much for watching this video and happy coding.